If you're a military weapon enthusiast, then you probably know of the Barrett 50 Cal, more commonly known as the Barrett M82. The sniper rifle is a recoil-operated sniper rifle developed by Barrett Firearms Manufacturing. This gun has been used in a lot of wars, including the Gulf War and the Russo-Ukraine War. It's an important piece of weaponry with an interesting history, too. So today, we'll look more into how exactly this mighty weapon works. First up, it's a gun you don't want to mess with. This one weapon system not only revolutionized the field of military sniping, but also gave way to a completely new category of weapon systems. By making use of an already existing large caliber bullet and adapting it to the precision rifle platform, the innovative Barrett M82 sniper rifle practically made the category of large caliber rifles that equip military snipers a global concept. And its influence is still seen today. The 120 to 140 centimeter long rifle can fire the .50 BMG centerfire cartridges, or a 10 round D detachable magazine. The rifle is definitely on the more hefty side, weighing in around 13.5 to 14 kilograms. Since it has a muzzle velocity of 853 meters per second and an expected firing range of 1800 meters, it isn't a surprise that the M82 is in use in more than 50 armed forces and has been through actions in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, and it's also a fan favorite with players of the Call of Duty game series. Now for a bit of history. So where exactly did the idea for this this weapon come from? The Barrett Firearms Company was founded by Ronnie Barrett for one single purpose, to build advanced semi-automatic rifles. The rifles had initially been made for the powerful 12.7x99mm NATO ammunition, which was developed for and used in M2 Browning machine guns. Barrett began to work on his vision in the early 1980s and just two years later, the first working rifles were available, hence the designation M82. Barrett carried on developing his rifle and crafted the improved M82 a1 rifle by 1986. When it came to military uses, the first conventional use was the purchase of about 100 M82 A1 rifles by the Swedish Army in 1989. But it didn't just end there. Major success followed soon after when the US military purchased significant numbers of the M82 A1 during operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. About 125 rifles were initially bought by the US Marine Corps, and orders from the US Army and Air Force came right after. With a long and effective of range, which is 1,500 meters with a record shot of 2,500 meters, along with high energy and availability of high effective ammunition, the M82 is a great aid for effective operations against targets like radar cabins, trucks, parked aircraft, and so on. The M82 can also be used to take down human targets from standoff range, or if the targets are behind a cover such as a cement wall. Continuous developments led to the M82 A2 bullpup rifle in 1987, which was just a reduced recoil coil version that was to be fired from the shoulder. However, it failed to make an impression on the world firearms market and was eventually booted from production. The latest variant of the M82 family is the M82A1M rifle, which has been adopted by USMC under the name M82A3SASR and was purchased in large numbers. This version differs from M82A1 since it has a full-length Picatinny rail that lets a wide variety of scopes and sighting devices be mounted directly on the rifle. Some some other changes are the addition of a rear monopod and a detachable bipod and muzzle brake. Next, it's a short recoil weapon. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's now talk about what goes on with the device for it to work. Like we said earlier, this sniper rifle is a short recoil weapon. Short recoil operation differs from long recoil operation in that the barrel and bolt recoil collectively, only a short while before they unlock and separate. In this case, the barrel stops fast, and the bolt continues to move backwards putting pressure on the recoil spring and finally carrying out the automated extraction and feeding process. Short recoil, on the other hand, is actually the most common system used today in self-loading handguns, and it also used to be pretty popular in machine gun designs. The basic idea is that the bolt, which is called a slide in a handgun, and barrel are bound together for an initial travel that spans a lot less than the overall length of the cartridge. After usually just a few millimeters of travel, the barrel stops and the bolt or slide continues continues its travel rearward to extract and eject the empty casing. Short recoil can be paired with essentially any locking system, but as of today, the Browning tilting barrel system is most common. When the M82 is fired, the barrel first recoils for a small distance, roughly an inch, while being tightly locked by the rotating bolt. After the short travel, the lower section of the accelerator arm held by the receiver upper section will already be attached to the bolt carrier while the middle portion strikes it back to the barrel by a rod placed in the 
the bolt carrier, transferring part of the recoil energy to the bolt to achieve reliable cycling and unlock it from the barrel. The bolt is released by turning the curved cam track in the carrier. Then, the barrel is stopped due to the effects of the accelerator, buffer string, and the muzzle brake. At this stage, the bolt continues backward in order to extract and eject a used case. On its return stroke, the bolt strips the fresh cartridge from the box magazine and feeds it into the chamber, and finally locks itself to the barrel. The striker is also cocked on the return stroke of the bolt. Interesting, right? Now on to some of the other parts. M82 rifles are fitted with scope mounts and folding backup iron sights in a situation where the glass scope may break. The US military M82 rifles are often equipped with Leopold Mark IV telescopic sights. Every M82 rifle is equipped with a folding carrying handle and a folding bipod. These are detachable on some other variants. For example, the M82A3 is also fitted with a detachable rear monopod that is to be placed under the user's butt. The pad is fitted with a soft recoil pad to further decrease the impact of recoil. M82A1 and M82A3 rifles could be mounted on the M122 infantry tripods, which were originally intended for machine guns or on vehicles using the special Barrett soft mount. The M82 can be fitted with a carry sling, but according to those who carried it in the field, the M82 is too uncomfortable to be carried on a sling, due to its excessive length and weight, so it's usually carried in a special carry softer hard case. Next, it's an anti-material rifle. An anti-material rifle is a rifle designed for use against military equipment, structures, and other hardware. Material. Anti-material rifles are chambered in much larger calibers than conventional rifles, and are used to help take out equipment like engines and unarmored targets. While modern-day armored vehicles are practically resistant to anti-material rifles, the extended range and penetration abilities still make the weapon really useful. Although it's not really intended to be used against human targets, the bullet weight and velocity of anti-material rifles give them exceptional long-range capability, even when compared with designated sniper rifles. Anti-material rifles are made in both bolt actions as well as semi-automatic designs as well. We're essentially talking overkill with the .50 caliber round, so the M82 is much better suited to shoot at buildings, vehicles, boats, and airplanes. Or it can take on an enemy combatant hiding behind thick cover like a brick wall, for example. And finally, we have some other variants. The M82 wasn't the last sniper rifle the Barrett Firearms manufacturers worked on. They saw their success and continued to make a lot more variants. The M82A1 is a semi-automatic rifle, in a conventional configuration. This weapon comes with a 29-inch barrel and feeds from a 10-round box magazine. It's also chambered in .50 BMG. The successor, the M82A2, differed from M82A1 mainly in its configuration. It's in a bullpup configuration, which means that the pistol grip and the trigger had been placed in front of the magazine, and the stock had been placed below the receiver, just after the magazine. An additional forward grip was also added underneath the receiver, and the scope mount was moved forward as well. This variant came with a 29-inch barrel, however, this variant is no longer manufactured. The M82A1M, also known as M82A, is an upgraded variant of the M82A1, with some additional features like a lengthened accessory rail, rear grip, and monopod socket. It can pretty easily be distinguished from the M107 thanks to its receiver-mounted rear sight, visible folding front sight, and somewhat shorter accessory rail. The M107 is a variant that was actually specifically designed for the US Army. Some noteworthy differences are the plastic rear grip bolted on the lower part of the buttstock and the rail that runs along the top spine all the way to the front of the forend. This weapon can be distinguished from the M82A1M from its rail-mounted rear sight, front sight which is concealed within the accessory rail and noticeably longer accessory rail. Currently, Barrett Firearms Manufacturing markets this variant as the M82A1. That's a wrap for this video. What do you guys think of the Barrett 50 Cal? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.